All right. Uh, by the way, uh, the movie Funny People opens tomorrow in theaters everywhere. And Judd Apatow and Seth Rogen are here. Here they come. Two big successful guys. So pick up your balls. Oh my uh, god, look at Seth, he's disappeared. Yeah, Seth lost like 150 pounds. Oh my pounds. god. <laughs> Judd looks the same. Judd is the same, but uh, Seth is gone. Seth is not hey, Seth. the Seth we used going? to know. Hey Judd, how, how you doing? doing? Hi. I was on the plane with Robin, but I left her alone. Were really? you on the plane with me? And you just flew uh, from uh, L.A., right? Yeah. That was me showing respect. <laughs> I didn't walk over and go, tell me about what happened with that. I shut up. <laughs> it's creepy now that she knows you're just looking at her and you well, didn't say you're anything. Just watching you're just me leering at her time. from afar. That's creepier. That's right. a little weirder. That's, That's like a paparazzi. Paul Williams was there. I was more interested in Paul Williams. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with you guys because we were just uh, joking around, but it's probably true you were on a limited time schedule because you have to keep going to the bank so often. <laughs> Uh, is that true? I mean, I mean, who is richer at this point? I think Judd must be. Oh, he, he has to be way, be, rich, yeah. re way richer. Right? I know, but it's flipping. It's turning so fast. <laughs> yeah. When I get richer, you'll know it. I'll, I'll, I'll ride Judd in here uh, with a saddle. <laughs> Judd, of course, is the writer-director of Funny People, and Seth is one of the stars. He stars along with Adam Sandler. And but what you now? What you is might, the premise of Funny People? Well, before you get to the premise, the premise in this whole life story is that Judd and Adam Sandler used to be roommates. Yeah, that is true. And uh, why was Adam Sandler so concerned with seeing your penis <laughs> when what? you were a roommate of his? Like, like you, and you even do that in the movie Funny People. I, I do, yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the, well, I came from you know Long Island from Syosset. We didn't talk about our penises with each other. It was right. a very like an athlete culture. <laughs> yeah. We didn't talk about whacking off in front of each other. I mean, all of those topics for me, like masturbation, was a top secret thing. Even my best friends, I never said like. How do you, you do, do it? Or isn't it great? Or, <laughs> and I move in with Adam, and Adam would be like, yeah, let's go to the Red Lobster, but, uh, okay, give me ten minutes, I'm going to go whack it, then we'll go over to Red Lobster. <laughs> Where's Adam from? Uh, and it's Adam's from, like, Mars. Yes, New, New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Right. Right. That was crazy New, New England fun. Exactly. I mean, that's, you mean, he would say to you, listen, i got to go whack off. I'll I'll do it in ten minutes and then yes. I'll I'll go and to then Red Lobster. Go to Red Lobster. I would do you, that with my roommates. You I, would? I would, and we realized it was a little gay because we would yeah. actually realize, we realized it was actually more time effective if we jack if we all jacked off at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> what about just shacking just shacking off at Red Lobster? Exactly. Uh, but, but but seriously, I remember in college, uh, I, I I I think I even stopped whacking off because I had a roommate who was like in the same room with me, and there was just no opportunity to whack yeah, off. You didn't you know, talk uh, about it. You yeah. know what I did was. I had the roommate, and I, I just made sure I knew exactly what his breathing sounded like <laughs> when he was when sleeping. He was asleep. <laughs> and, I, and I knew exactly his breathing, it and I would down. whack off, and if, if he went, <laughs> you like, <laughs> if he had a dream, I would stop. What college did you go to? I went to USC. USC. Yes. So Adam Sandler was not your roommate in college. No, he was uh, at NYU. <laughs> right. Uh, but when we lived together, I mean, he Why did you live together? Was this before Saturday Night Live for him? Adam Basically, when he was at NYU, he got on that show Remote Control with Colin Quinn. Right. Mm -hmm. And he, he was on the Cosby show every once in a while. And right. Bud Friedman told him to move to California, and he would put him on at the improv a lot. So, and I met him the day he moved to L.A., how did two guys hook up to be roommate? Like, was it like a roommate web service? Or <laughs> it like, seems like, weird to me. I yeah, never. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to really get <laughs> to the bottom. Of it. I lived with Grandma Molly. Show. My my grandma lived uh, in, in Beverly Hills, right. and so I I had never had an apartment in my life. And Adam lived with people who weren't really taking care of their end of the rent. <laughs> right. I, I don't think Alan Covert was paying the rent. Uh, and so so, so we Adam in. was on remote control. He wasn't on Saturday Night Live yet. He moves out to L. A. Yes. You somehow find him. And you live We're both together. at the improv doing stand up. Ah, and, okay. uh, and he needs someone to pay half the rent. I mean, we didn't really have any money, so we had a little $900 a month apartment in the valley. So when he gets Saturday Night Live, does he leave your apartment? Is that what happens? It's literally like we live in the apartment. I'm going to go to Chicago. They're looking at, a, at a, 10 comedians. 
And then he says, I got this, I'm going to be in the cast of Saturday Night Live. And I thought, that doesn't make any sense because he's just a mumbler in a stand up act. <laughs> he doesn't do any impressions, he doesn't do any characters. Right. And, and, it, and it made me sad because I'm like, I don't do any of those things either, but I'm not getting on Saturday Night <laughs> You address that in Funny People. I like this about Funny People because it's like guys, that like, like, like Seth's sort of character is despicable in some ways. Yeah. He doesn't even tell his roommate that uh, he could be writing for a professional comedian. You're, you're underhanded kind of thing. So this is what goes on. You're saying to yourself, fuck this guy. He, he's as bad as I am. Why should he be on Saturday Night Live? Oh, yeah. It's and really hard to feel good for someone when they do well. I find. I, I'm with you. So Sam Surrendous. goes off to Saturday Night Live, yes. and you sit there, and you say, w wait a second. Now he gets to be a big star. He starts to make movies. Yes. And you're still kind of, I mean, it's not that you're, you're slouching off. I mean, you're doing some stuff. But did you ever get resentful of him that he didn't pick up the phone and call you and say, get me a writing job on Saturday Night Live? Well, it was the, it was the exact opposite of that i knew from day one that adam was going to be a superstar and that i had zero charisma and it depressed me and i would sit in the apartment and drink southern comfort and go like why am i not an interesting person uh, maybe because you were drinking southern so comfort is seth's character is seth's character and funny people you well, I used to think it was Seth, but now it's probably more Adam because he's the prick yeah. <laughs> in the movie. Uh, but when he went there, you know, it was very exciting, and we would talk on the phone about sketches, and we'd try to help each other. Uh, and I remember I was I wrote my sketch packet, right. and it, I was like, I'm going to get this job, and I got to get it to 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 James Downey to read my sketch packet, and it took forever to get him to read it to get the job at SNL so I could join Sandler over there. And the day that Downey considered it, he was like, yeah, this stuff is pretty good. Rob Schneider was there, who's like one of my closest friends, and he goes, I don't think Judd's ready. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> You got some really great friends. <laughs> By Rob Schneider, <laughs> nonetheless. Yeah, right. yeah, you're not ready. Is this vindication? I'm talking about all the success. I'm saying these movies are, are a gold mine. The ones that you've written, that you've directed. I mean, this is... Produced. Yeah. Now, Rob Schneider probably calls you and goes, Hey, I think uh, you're ready. <laughs> Here, I'll, give you, I'll give you some statistics on these movies. Uh, Judd's movies. Here we go. And I'm not even including, you know, I'm not breaking down which one Seth's in. Seth's in a lot of them and all that kind of stuff. But here are all of them, I believe. Yeah, all of them, maybe. Um, Judd has either produced or helped write ten movies, including Superbad, Pineapple Express, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, and You Don't Mess with the Zohan. As a director, Judd's films have grossed $258 million. As a producer, his films have grossed $964 million. Nice. It's very impressive. Wow. And Knocked Up earned $219 million at the box office worldwide with a $30 million budget. This is awesome. Good That's movie. good. This is good. That's but a good track record. Here's the thing I don't get. Yes. Catherine Heigl, who's in the movie, <laughs> yes. is now going around saying crappy things about the movie. She said in Vanity Fair about Knocked Up, she said the movie was sexist. It paints women as shrews and humorless and uptight. It's a little sexist. Why would you? Sounds realist. <laughs> <laughs> would exactly. you ever use her in a movie again? I'd, ha I'd have to go see The Ugly Truth and determine uh, how. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that looks like it really puts women on a pedestal in a, in a beautiful way. The Ugly Truth. <laughs> yeah, The Ugly Truth. You know, she hates doing it, but she's going to continue. There, yeah. I hear there's a scene where she's wearing a, a, a vibrator, underwear, underwear, has a vibrator yeah. in it. Right. Yeah. So I'd have to see if that was uh, uplifting for women. She's, yeah. she's, she's so, got a Kate Hepburn career going. So you take offense at her saying this. After you put her in a movie, it was a huge success. Made her a huge star. Made her a huge star. A critical success, too, yeah. by the way. Uh, yes. I, I think that, uh, I mean, she probably was doing six hours of interviews and kissing everyone's ass and then just got tired and, and slipped a little bit. But the truth is, uh, the I movies... didn't slip. I was doing fucking interviews. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> right. Right. Seth knows what to do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, you know, I, you know, I, the funniest thing that makes us laugh about it every time when we think about it, and, and we haven't talked to Catherine to, because we never had a fight with her, so we just don't understand what's going on, quite right. frankly. But uh, Seth always says, it doesn't even make any sense. She improvises.